In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cumulative frequency curve from scratch. And then we're going to use that information from the graph to be able to answer these questions. This is problem number five. A company has 180 employees and the company record summarizes their salaries as follows. So on the left hand side in the first column, we have the salary of these 180 employees in the thousands. OK, so when it says between 10 and 15 in the first interval, it really means between 10,000, including 10,000 and 15,000, but it does not include 15,000. So you need to understand how to read that. So the first thing we need to do before we can create a cumulative frequency curve is to actually find the cumulative frequencies. That is by far one of the biggest mistakes that I see students make all the time. They're given data, they're given the frequencies, but they have to realize if you are being asked to create a cumulative frequency curve or OGIV, O-G-I-V-E, that's how it's also called, then you need to realize that you need to create a cumulative frequency column. In this case, the space is here for us, which is great because they're even asking us in part A to complete this cumulative frequency column. So let's go ahead and do that. The first number is going to be 8. Then the way it works is that you're going to add. So 8 plus 13 is 21. 21 plus 19 is 40. 40 plus 26 is 66. 66 plus 32 is 98. 98 plus 35 is 133. 133 plus 20 is 153. 153 plus 13 is going to be 166. Then plus 10, 176 plus 4 is 180, which is great because they have told us in the problem there's a total of 180 employees, so we better get our cumulative frequencies to add up to 180, and they have. Now that we have the cumulative frequency column, we are going to practice the four step plan to success, as I like to call it, for you to create this cumulative frequency curve. In another video, which I'll link below, I have explained to you exactly the steps and I've gone through an example of how to create a cumulative frequency curve. We're going to go ahead and practice that right now. So there's four steps. Like I said, I like to call this the four step plan to success. Step one is to add a zero to the top of the cumulative frequency column. Step two is to add an interval to the bottom. And in reality, what I want to do is just repeat that same number again. I'm going to circle the leftmost numbers and then I'm going to draw diagonals. So 10 goes with zero and those are going to become my ordered pairs. So 10 goes with zero, 15 goes with eight, 20 goes with 21. I'm writing them down as I do the diagonal so I don't make a mistake because this is a long list of numbers. 25 comma 40, 30 goes with 66, 35 with 98, then we have 40 with 133, 45 153, 50 166, 55, 176, and 60 goes with 180. So those are the ordered pairs that I need to graph on my cumulative frequency curve. So here's my graph paper. On the IB exam, you will be given graph paper, and it's going to look something like this. They sometimes are very specific as to, you know, how many centimeters they want you to make it. For now, we have to realize on my x-axis, I need to go from 10 to 60. And on my y-axis, my cumulative frequencies go up to 180. So I'm going to see if I can space this out nicely. I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So that fit beautifully. Okay, so right there, I'm able to put everything on my x-axis which is going to represent salary in the thousands so i'm going to go ahead and label my axis 
And notice I'm labeling it exactly the way they have told me in the problem. This is the salary S and it's in thousands of dollars. Okay. I do not need a break right now because I am consistent from zero to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. This is consistent. Obviously in between it's going to be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then 60. Now on the Y axis, I have to get as high as 180. Let's see how many of these we have. Let's see if I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have eight of them and I have to get as far as 180. 180 divided by eight is 22.5. So maybe I'll go by... 25 I can either go by 25 I can't go by 20 because I'm not gonna make it if I go 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 160 I'm gonna be short so I don't want to do that I could go by 25 and then realize that in between 25 however the halfway mark is gonna be 12 and a half so I don't know if you really want to deal with that either another option that we have is to go by 30 so I can go 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. And because the amount of space between 0 and 30 right here, there's 10 little bars, 10 of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means that in reality, each one of these that you see is going by 3, 3, 6, 9, 12. And I'm not going to like basically write all those out because that will be ridiculous. Okay, it's going to make our graph look very cluttered. But I just want you to understand that if they give you a choice, then you have to make a good choice so that you can graph this as accurately as possible. Most of the time, when they want you to draw a graph, they will tell you in advance how far apart they want everything to be. And then, of course, we have to remember to label our axes. So these are your cumulative frequencies. Very important. You must label your axes, okay? It's one of those things I have to get on my students all the time. You need to. It is a requirement. Nobody's going to understand what your graph is about if you don't label your axes. Okay, done with my rant about <laughs> labeling your axes. Let's go ahead now and let's plot these points as carefully as possible. The first point is 10, 0. So 10, 0, I'm going to start off at 10 and 0. Then my second point is 15, 8. 15 is in the middle. Remember that we're going by 3, so I'm going to go 3, 6, 9. So right before I get to 9, that's where my point's going to go. I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. So again, the point is the point 15, 8. So here's 15. And then remember I told you these are 3, 6, 9. So right before I get to 9, that's going to be the point 3, 8. You're doing the best that you can because, you know, right now this graph is not that big. So I'm zooming in to kind of show you that that's where the point is going to be. Let's see what the next order pair is going to be. It's now so big. So 20, 21. Okay, so 20, 21. So on the graph, I go to 20, which is here. And the remember is going by 3, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. So right here is going to be the point 20, 21. And I'm going to erase all of this because it's going to be super distracting. And I'm just going to go 20, 21, okay? So that's my point 20, 21. Here was the point 15, 8. Here's the point 10, 0. Let's keep going. So after 2021, we have 2540. So 2540, so here's 25, this is 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45. Awesome, that one is going to be beautiful. So let's go ahead and just put it right there. So 2545 is right there. The next one, oh, it's 2540. It's not 2545. So hold on, I went too too far and I'm showing you you know this so that you understand it's possible to make a mistake but you have to correct it. it's very important so it's not 2545 it's 2540 so 2540 again here's 25 so 33 36 39 
42 so it's about here actually okay it's not quite up onto that one I thought it was gonna be beautiful perfect but it's okay so then 3066 so now I go 3066 so here's 30 here's 60 remember it goes 63 66 so this one lands quite perfectly so 30 66 it's gonna be right here the next point is and this is really tedious right but you have to you have to be able to create this graph as perfectly as possible because when you go to answer the questions if you have a very sloppy graph your answers are going to be way off on the ib exam for those of you who are taking this as part of your ib class they don't give you that much leeway in terms of your answers they expect you to be precise especially if they give you graph paper so it's really important for us to take our time and do this correctly all right the next point is going to be 3598 so we go back we find 35 35 is easy to find because it's right here and then i need to go all the way to 98 so here's 90 93 96 99 so almost to that third little point right there again i'm going to erase all this stuff that i'm showing you to guide you because we don't need it. So 35, let me make sure it's the right one before I get in trouble again. So 35, 98, 35, 98. So 35, and then 93, 96, 35, 98. The next one is 40, 133. Okay, so 40, and then 133, so 120, 123, 126, 129, 132, 135. So it's going to be right after 132, right before 135. So it's going to be about here. Then we have 45, 153. So 45... And then 153. Then we have the point 5166. So 5166 will be right after 165 because these are all going by 15 in the middle. Um, 55176. We're almost done. So 55176. And then finally we're at 6180. So 6180 is right here. And then you want to be able to make this curve as smooth as possible. Ah, oh, towards the end, I got a little bit sloppy. Let me see if I can do this one more time. I know on the iPad that I'm using, I have the ability to kind of just undo and then do it again. When you're doing this on an examination, you are allowed to use pencil for creating our graph. The entire exam, for those of you who are taking an IB exam, must be completed in blue or black ink. However, the graphs can be done in pencil. Okay, so if you do it really lightly, you should be able to get your smooth curve. Again, remember what I told you, don't just kind of keep this line, this curve going forever. It has a clear beginning, it has a clear end, super important. And there we have it, we have our graph. It is a cumulative frequency curve. We labeled the x-axis salary, we labeled the y-axis the cumulative frequency. So right now, we have completed the cumulative frequency column and we have drawn the cumulative frequency curve. Now we need to use the graph to find an estimate for the median salary. The median salary is the value in the middle. The median salary is approximately the 50th percentile. So what you need to do to determine the median salary is that you're going to go to the total amount of frequencies that you have here. 180 employees, the halfway mark is going to be at 90. 90 is not the answer that we're looking for. It is not the median salary. It is the location of the answer. So again, you take N, which is the total amount here, okay, it's 180, to find the median, the median is approximately the 50th percentile, 180 times 0.5 is 90. Now you're going to go to the graph, you're going to locate 90 on the cumulative frequency 
axis. You're going to go straight across until you touch the graph. As soon as you touch the graph, as careful as possible, you are going to come straight down. So right now, that means that 34,000 is the median salary, okay? So the approximate median salary is 34,000. And remember that even though we are at 34 on the graph, we have said that this represents thousands of dollars. Okay, for part D, the question says, use the graph to calculate the percentage of employees with a salary below 22,000. In this case, we are gonna start by finding the salary of 22,000. So now I'm gonna go to my X axis and I'm going to locate 22,000, which is right here. I'm going to go up to the graph. The minute I touch the graph, I'm going to go over to the left to the frequency to determine exactly how many employees are earning below 22,000. All of these employees are earning below 22,000. So that is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So that means that the answer is there's approximately 24 employees that are earning a salary below 22,000. Okay, 24 employees. Now, be very careful. That is not the answer to the question. You're like, what? Why isn't that the answer to the question? What does the question ask for? It says to use the graph to calculate the percentage of employees with a salary below 22,000. So 24 employees are according to our graph are earning less than 20,000 than 22,000, excuse me, okay? That, however, is not percentage. So what I need to do is take 24, divide it by 180, and multiply it by 100, and that's gonna give me the percentage of employees that are actually earning less or equal to $22,000. So 24 divided by 180, and then take that and multiply it by 100, that means approximately 13.3% of the employees are earning a salary below $22,000. All right, so let's go on to part B. The same question, but now it says, use the graph to calculate the percentage of employees. They're not gonna fool you again, right? Because now you know it's percentage that are earning a salary above 58,000. So that means that we are going to go to the graph. We're gonna locate 58,000. 58,000 is literally like almost at the 60,000 mark, which is the maximum any employee earns. It's all the way at the end. So you wanna be very careful. You know it's gonna be here. And by the way, these lines that you draw, these lines count as work on the IB exam. Yes, they do. It explains your thought process. That line is not <laughs> very linear at all. Hopefully your line is better. Um, and so once I come here, I'm going to draw a line and I go straight across. And so basically, because each one of these little smaller lines represents three, I'm gonna say that there's about 177 employees that are earning less than 58,000, which leaves us with three employees that are earning more. So that means three employees have a salary above 58,000. Again, my job is to figure out the percentage. So three out of 180 times 100 is going to give us 1.67%. So about 1.67% of our employees have a salary above 58,000. All right, so now it says, use your graph, this is in part E, to estimate the upper quartile and the lower quartile. And in case you have forgotten, the lower quartile, Q1, is the 25th percentile approximately. So what we're gonna do here is very similar to what we did with the median. 
We're going to take the total, which is 180, and then we're going to multiply that by the quarter marks times 0.25 to figure out what's a quarter. Well, if 90 was half, then basically what we're doing is half of 90. So that's going to be 45. Either do it in your calculator or just, you know, common sense. The midway uh, was found at 90 because half of 180 is 90. So a quarter is half of 90, which is at 45. But again, if you just multiply 180 times 0.25, you're going to get the answer 45. 45 is not the answer to this question. 45 is the location of the answer, which means now you go to the graph on the cumulative frequency, you locate 45, you come straight across until you touch the graph as precisely as possible. That was why we took so long to make this graph as perfect as possible. Then you come straight down. So 26,000 is going to be my approximate lower quartile. Okay. So that's going to be my lower quartile. It's about $26,000. To figure out what's called your upper quartile, upper quartile is basically your Q3. Upper quartile is now going to be approximately your 75th percentile. So we do it the same way. We take 180, this time times 0.75. So again, if I were going in quarters up to 180, it would be 45, 90, 135. So I know that when I multiply this, I'm going to get 135. If you don't believe me, again, put it in your calculator and you're going to see that 180 times 0.75 is going to be 135. So then I come to my graph and I locate 135. So 135 is going to be right here. I draw a line from the cumulative frequency column as perfectly as possible until you touch the graph. You stop as soon as you touch the graph and then you come straight down. So basically 41,000 is going to be my upper quartile. So hopefully this helped practice, I would um, suggest that you watch this over again and then practice with new questions. Good luck.